So in other words, what to do when attachment doesn't get what it wants. It sounds very cruel to put it like that because it feels too personal, but that's essentially what's happening. We only want nice things to happen. So when attachment doesn't get what it wants, which is a way of putting this, that is absolutely the opportunity to practice. You know, we all know very well all the major, the, the amazing teachings in the Mahayana component of the path, transforming problems into happiness. We love to hear about it in the books when we read it, but this is exactly the point, you know. This is where, and it, this is where practice starts, of course it is. So what other, what is the practice? The practice is to recognize that, it, <clears throat> that we have strong attachment to get things to be nice. We get distressed and unhappy and stressed and anxious or angry or have fears when they don't. And when we also understand, when we understand one of the functions of attachment, I mean, we love this phrase in the West, you're a control freak. That's exactly what attachment is, it's a complete control freak. It wants to have, it wants to make sure that what I want I, it will happen. And we can't control it. And this is the point, is when we have so much fear. So practicing, recognizing attachment is recognizing that when things don't happen. And that's when you learn to practice. That's when you learn to accept the thing you can't change, you know. And the other one, I think a really powerful one for most of us is karma because that's not normal in the world. We can't, you know, karma's not a typical view, but certainly as Buddhists, I mean, as Lama Zopa says, and this is a tough one, as Lama Zopa says, everything we experience, everything out there is our karmic appearance. Whatever comes in our lives, whatever arises in front of us, whether it's happy or suffering, that's something that we created. And it really is implying emptiness, isn't it, you know? It's our karmic appearance. So, Because one of the functions of ego, and ego grasping and then attachment and then fear, <clears throat> as Lama Yeshi calls fear, as Lama Yeshi calls ego, it's self-pity me. It sounds very cruel, but then it's like, how dare this happen? I don't deserve it. Why is this happening to me? We feel that with a very strong instinct of ego grasping. When we understand karma, it's completely irrational. Everything we experience is the fruit of our past karma. And, and if we get sick or not get sick, if our family gets sick and die, or if we don't get sick, or if our job gets stopped, some people will go through this whole coronavirus problem with not the slightest change in their lives. They won't get sick, they won't meet people who get sick, their job will keep going, they'll keep getting their paychecks, they'll keep going to the beach, they'll do whatever. Some people, their lives will be this way, others will be totally disrupted, you know? So that's our karmic appearance. I mean, look at the people on those, those, uh, uh, those uh, big ships. You know, locked down. Look at the people in, being locked, that might not happen to some people. So we've got to see, you know, what arises and know it's our karmic appearance. We created it. So by the time we, if we try to apply the teaching of karma, owning what's happening and not feeling like a victim, and then we try to apply the teaching about attachment and having the courage to greet the thing we don't like, which subdues the mind and lessens the panic, and then we realize that things are changing anyway, things are impermanent. These are all classic Buddhist teachings. But we can prove the extent to which we suffer in these things, when things go wrong, is the extent to which we think that things should be permanent, we don't understand attachment or aversion, and we have no idea about karma. So these are opportunities to reply, absolutely. And then, of course, that, that's the day-to-day -day practice, navigating what arises in front of us, trying to keep a happy mind about it. And that's quite literally true, keep a happy mind. And this, of course, implies also compassion for others, you know, trying to be reasonable in our lives. Even when you're walking down the street and you're, and you're freaking out about getting the germs, you know? I mean, that's completely self-centered. Be sensible, but we should be thinking, I don't want to give germs to others. Try and have compassion, you know? This is it's a really simple idea. Not be afraid. Be reasonable. Do what we should do, do what we can do, but not be afraid. And try and have also a view of compassion for others. That's really important, I think. It's being kind. How do we... How, so in this scenario, of of all the fears and dramas of coronavirus, however it's impacting upon our lives, we have to recognize our own role in all this, like karma, as I said, karma, impermanence, attachment, that's our stuff. But then we have to realize everyone's in the same boat. Everyone else has fears. Some people have a lot more fears than we do. And try to be kind. What else? Try to be kind and patient and kind. Yeah, a really good practice of compassion. I mean, if we're going to be someone like, like we're going to be, someone, like, be like someone like Lama Zobimsha, he's walking around, every single second breathing in the suffering of coronavirus of every single person suffering from it. I mean, there's no question, that is absolutely a, a classic, powerful way of practicing compassion. You know, imagining you're taking upon yourself the suffering, all the panics and fears and worries of all the people everywhere who are feeling like we are. And many people are gonna have a lot of suffering. They're gonna lose, I mean, they're losing their, people are losing their jobs. You know, the poor people whose kids have to stay home. I mean, there's so many dilemmas that some people are gonna have. So absolutely, that's a classic, a completely strong practice will be Tongren imagine taking upon ourselves the suffering of all the people who are suffering, either sick and dying or the ones who are suffering from the consequences of all the, you know, the, the, the clampdowns in the different countries. That's a very strong one, yes.
Imagine that one. Apparently His Holiness has advised we do Tara practice. I can't imagine why His Holiness has got the wisdom to know, but I don't know. So there you go. Lama Zopa recommends Raja Arma and recommends, uh, you know, recommends uh, Black Manjushri. His Holiness recommends Tara. I mean, we all know we could easily do Medicine Buddha, something we all know. So all these advices, let's take them, you know. I mean, what is Tara? Tara is optimism, Tara is action, Tara is success, Tara is courage, isn't she? Power. Who knows why His Holiness suggested that. What a nice practice to do, though.